Johnny, Shohei Otani is the player that everybody wants to see in the All-Star game. And so you and I are going to share some of his incredible stats from this last week. And then we're going to urge Angel fans to go and vote and to vote often and to vote now. We're also going to put our GM hats on. I'm glad you're wearing a hat. And we're going to talk about the deals that the Angels need to make so that they can contend, they can win, because we know that Perry listens to the podcast. And then we're going <laughs> to give our keys for the weekend against the Mariners. You're locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, we're honored that you make Locked On Angels your first listen of the day available wherever you get your podcast. If you're listening on the audio side, you can rate and review the pod. And if you're watching on the video side, you can subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's episode is brought to you by BlueNile.com. Make your special moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Angel listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more using the promo code Locked On at checkout. Hey, thank you for joining us for this edition of Locked On Angels. It's a Friday. We're excited for the weekend. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. You got the Super Halo Bros in the house with you, and uh, we're lifelong fans of the team, hoping that our fan-guided wisdom will guide the Angels to some success. And I think we're going to share a little bit of that this episode, Mike, in terms of uh, putting on our GM hats. But yep. before we get to that... We need to talk about Shohei Ohtani and the week that he's had and why he deserves to go to the All-Star Game as both a pitcher and a hitter like he did in 2021. Why don't you start us out? Well, this week has been an interesting week, not just for Shohei, but for me and for you. Because ever since we started hosting this podcast... Uh, everybody has decided to text us with their angel thoughts and we appreciate that. <laughs> and so I've had some really interesting conversations. One conversation that happened today, in fact, was somebody said, man, Shohei pitches so well, maybe they can have a pitch more often. And I was like, it's not really how it works, no, right? But, it works. but no. the idea is Shohei is such a unicorn that people are like, Hey, let's just throw him in there all the time. Nolan Ryan did it. Why can't Shohei do it, right? <laughs> so here's here's his stats overall for the season, pitching yeah. wise. He's six and four with a two point nine zero ERA, and here's where it really gets ridiculous: sixty eight and one third innings pitched and mm -hmm. ninety Ks in twelve starts, John. Wow. And, and let's talk about the last two days. I'm going to talk the pitching stats, and then you can actually give the hitter stats. He had a great start the other night, eight innings, two hits, no runs, one walk, which is yeah. the key to success for Shohei, and 13 Ks. And if you mm. do a deep dive into the numbers, he had a 50% ground ball rate. He had 14 swings and misses. That was 36% of all of the strikes. He had 32 called strikes. And then the exit velocity of the ball off the bat for the opposing team was only 86 miles per hour on average. That's John. some good, that's some good stuff. That's, that's some, some good, good meat, meat here, here Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the hitting side this week. Cause he was yeah. incredible in the last two days. Yeah. As a hitter, he went four for seven with two walks, two home runs that were both three run shots. And then of course he had two sacrifice flies, which gave him a total of eight RBIs. Now listen, our frustrations from that, Tuesday night game had nothing to do with the fact that Shohei performed so well. It was that right. he got us back into the game twice and, uh, and the angels couldn't capitalize on that. So that was the ultimately frustrating part. But as far as yeah. Shohei went, that was an incredible performance. And a lot of people are saying that might be the two best games. That might be the best back to back performance of any player in history because of what he did as a hitter and as a pitcher, on Wednesday night. And so uh, his season stats totaling up so far for, as a hitter, a 260 average, 15 home runs, 45 RBIs, and 822 OPS. Unreal. And he has been worth a full 1.0 war over the last two days, according to fan graphs. So he's, he has earned this team one whole game just by being himself. And wow. if it was Otani versus the Royals, uh, that proves it right there, that one war that he gained over the last two days. And so the conversations are already starting about him be being in the MVP race and 
People are getting upset. My favorite line is, oh, just because he pitches and hits, he's going to be in the MVP race every year? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly why he's going to be in the MVP <laughs> yeah. race every Soup. year. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it just makes me laugh that people are frustrated at that fact. But look, when you if you were to divide him into two people, then then maybe he's not a number one MVP, but he's a combined person in terms of hitting and pitching. And that's what makes him an MVP is an everyday hitter and a, uh, a strong solid starting pitcher. And we've seen people get MVP before for being a pitcher. We saw uh, Clayton Kershaw do it. And I'm trying to think of some other ones, but Kershaw Justin Verlander. Yes. Mm-hmm. Verlander. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So those are the two that come to mind, but, uh, but they weren't hitting. Uh, right. <laughs> and right. so it, it's, it's most valuable player well and and he I does think it on week, both sides of the field this week is proof of how valuable he is right yeah. and even even when the angels were struggling he was the one that came in and stopped that losing streak and so right. he is somebody that you can never not count on in the mvp voting he should be in the mvp voting is as, as, as he's performing this way in the top three every single time because he has just been so so incredible and you even tweeted this out from the Super Halo Brothers uh, page that Shohei was interviewed after that game that they lost 12 to 10 to the Royals. And he was really frustrated with himself because he said, well, I had those two sacrifice flies. I could have done better. Right. And so you even said, Shohei, you're fine, bro. Everything's (laughs) going to be okay. (laughs) I said, oh, buddy, (laughs) like you did everything right. There's nothing that you could do better, but that's just his mindset. Yep. When it comes to him, and and this game and his approach to the game he's always looking to get better and looking at situations at at how he can be better but i just i i mean my sentiment there was no don't don't even dare beat yourself up over your performance that night because right that is totally unwarranted and uh so again i understand his approach to the game is hustle 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 what could i have done better but at the end of the day it's like no dude like these guys around you need to be better. You're doing everything. Step it up. Just Absolutely. right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and here's why we're talking about this because Otani was second in the DH voting and Jordan Alvarez was first and no disrespect to Jordan Alvarez, but he is not somebody that I want to see in the all-star game at all. <laughs> and as we talked about this on yesterday's show, I was looking at the comments on our YouTube channel. And I think four of the five comments that first came up, where people going, yeah, we don't want to see Jordan at all either. <laughs> Everybody wants to see Shohei. Our, our our friend Mello went to see Shohei, and he's a yeah. Dodger fan. Like people right. want to see him perform, and I really think that they want to see him not just hit but also pitch. And so, Angel fans, this is where we need to step up because yes. we need to vote, vote, vote. And you can vote multiple times. So go and do that. Stop what you're doing right now and go and do that, or make yourself a note, set an alarm, and go and do that today <laughs> because we want Shohei to be the star in this game because nobody is more exciting in this game than Shohei Otani. And I want to see him hit. I also want to see him pitch. And if he's feeling good, he can get back into that home run derby if he'd like. But if he wants to take the week off, then he can and just hit and pitch for us. But I know that fans want to see both of those things happen. Take the energy you uh, bring to Twitter and and complain about the team and take that energy and put it into voting for Shohei. <laughs> Send it. Send it in a new direction. Well, uh, coming up on Locked On Angels, we're going to put our GM hats on, Mike, and make the moves that the Angels need to make in order to contend. But before we get to that conversation, Locked On Angels is brought to you by BlueNile.com. They are the original online jeweler since 1999 they've helped millions and millions of couples create their perfect engagement ring and blue nile is committed to ensuring that the highest ethical standards are observed when sourcing diamonds and jewelry and if it's not perfect no problem they have a 100 satisfaction guarantee so you can shop stress-free and make sure that you get guaranteed free shipping and returns take all the stress out of picking the right piece for you, for your special someone. And if you need that special purchase fast, in most cases, Blue Nile can deliver overnight. So if you forgot, uh, you forgot an anniversary or a birthday or something special, uh, they can have your back and get it out to you overnight. Every order is insured and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. So you can make your special moment sparkle 
with a purchase from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Angels listeners like you get $50 off a purchase of $500 or more. All you have to do is use the code Locked On at checkout. Again, that's code Locked On at checkout. So go to BlueNile.com today. And we're also here today because of our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs, sports info. You can find the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs, which is incredible to watch. If you haven't watched it, you should. And of course, Major League Baseball. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcast, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, so as we jump into segment two, I just want to remind uh, everyone of a conversation that you and I had just a couple of days ago when we were speaking about Anthony Rendon and his injury. Now, we have seen that the Dodgers lost Mookie Betts to an injury. And what did they do? They immediately went out and got Trace Thompson. They made a trade and they made it happen. And that's the kind of effort and uh, front office work that the Dodgers do because they can. And that's why they are always a winning team. Right. And when right. Rendon went down, the Halos moved Matt Duffy to third and and have had Renjifo playing second. And he's been batting third, which yeah. I don't understand that move at all <laughs> because there's so many better options at third. So since the uh, since the Halos are not doing anything so far now, you and I are of the mind that Perry Manassian doesn't sit on his hand. So, yeah, hopefully he's on the phone constantly and making some uh making some moves here, but since they aren't doing anything, anything right now, Mike, let's put our GM hats on and decide how are we going to fix the third base situation? Why don't you start us out? Okay. Well, you mentioned the name Miguel Andujar who yeah. played for the Yankees. He is now in AAA and actually was frustrated with that demotion. Mm-hmm. And if you're not familiar with Miguel, he's actually a pretty solid third baseman and a solid offensive third baseman. He had one really good year a few years ago. I believe it was 2017, 2018. 2018 cuz he was second okay. place behind Shohei Otani in the in, in the uh, rookie of the year voting. That's right. And so imagine if we had those two on this team. (laughs) Yeah. I actually really like him. And I think that he would be somebody that the angels could go and get right now. He's kind of wasting away in the minor leagues. And I don't know if the Yanks are going to hang on to him so that they can bring him up in case of an injury or an Mm -hmm. emergency, but it's one of those situations where you have actually sent this guy down and frustrated him, but you have also maybe lessened his confidence a bit. And so it might be that he just needs a new scene because his last couple of years haven't been as good as his rookie year. Sure. And, and he hasn't played as much. And a part of that is injuries. And a part of that is just the Yankees go and get the right guys for the right spots. And so I actually am intrigued by Miguel Andujar. And I'm also intrigued, John, by Brandon Drury, who plays for the Reds. And he plays second and can play third base as yeah. well. Here's here's quick stats. He has an 841 OPS and 14 home runs. Yeah. And here's the thing. He's a free agent at the end of this year. Right. So this would be a rental and then Rendon would be back. Some of us right. may not want that, but <laughs> I think that this actually could be a great rental. Now, when you're talking about making a trade, here's the names that, that come to mind. Uh-huh. I'm going to use these names pretty often, but I think that, when you're making trades for guys like these, you're going to need to give some good guys away. So sure. I think that Joe Adele should be in one of these trades. I think guys like Chase Silseth could be somebody that's brought up. I, I think for Miguel Andujar, because he's in AAA right now, I was looking at some of the crossover numbers. And I know we haven't really seen much of David McKinnon, but he might be a trade candidate as we look to give Miguel Andujar a, a, a brand new set of yeah. of opportunity right and so and maybe even a Jonathan Diaz would be in that trade Mm. and I don't know what the Brandon Drury trade would be like he is performing much better in the majors and so we'd probably have to give a little bit more there but what are your thoughts on that that trade package or do you have other names that you think we should go and we should get 
I've got a few thoughts. And so uh, regarding Miguel Andujar, he has gone on the record as saying that he he requested a trade uh, out of the right. Yankee system. Yeah. And so he is very unhappy and would like a change of scenery. Now, Mike, you're right. His stock has kind of dropped since 2018. And so I think that you could make a move there for some good prospects, but not have to make too much of a big deal out of it in terms of the players involved. I, I have done a lot of research here, and I'm going to talk about uh, the Yankees system, the Cincinnati Reds system, where Brandon Drury is, and a, a few other options here. Everybody needs first base help. Oh, Everybody okay. needs uh, – I looked at everybody's top 30 prospects, and yeah, some people are regarded as, as infielders, so they can usually play all the positions, but there hasn't been anybody in the top 30 prospects for the Reds or the Yankees who uh, could play first base. And I understand the, the Yankees have Rizzo now and yeah. they've got him on a, on a deal, but the, the deal is not going to last forever, obviously. Right. And if he goes down, you want somebody to replace him. And speaking of, of third baseman getting hurt, I mean, Donaldson went down and they went out and got Matt Carpenter. They didn't give Andujar the job. And so that's, that's also a good point too. Yeah. I and just Carpenter's see, been incredible. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's having a resurgence, but I mean, you choose a veteran like that over, you know, one of your top prospects. And that's just a really interesting move on the Yankees part. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were willing to part with him. So a lot of my ideas come down to Trey cabbage and David McKinnon as mm. potential uh, pieces because of the first base need and the jam that we have at first base in terms of having Jared Walsh, because I think Jared Walsh is going to be part of this team for a long, long time. Uh, Andrew Hart can play third and he can also play the outfield and I, I understand that there would be an issue with Rendon coming back, but then do you move one of those two at the end of the season? Because right now you need somebody through the end of this season. And so right. I think you make that move and figure it out later because you need to make those win now moves. Now, when it comes to Brandon Drury, I think it would be perfectly acceptable to trade and, and possibly extend for him because mm. that guy can play all over the infield. I mean, he's even played some shortstop for Cincinnati this season, even though he's more regarded as a, a third baseman and a second baseman, but he can do it all. And I think that that is never a bad piece to have. And you can give him uh, you know, a short-term deal to keep him around on the angels. And so those are my thoughts with those guys. I also think that we need another lefty out of the bullpen. And I think Andrew Chaffin, Chaffin is the perfect option. And he's yeah. currently on the tigers. He's got a two year deal worth 13 million. And he has been firing very well against left-handed hitters. So if Aaron loop, isn't going to cut it, I think that Chaffin could be a great option there as well. And again, more first base depth for these teams and their top 30 prospects. So those are my thoughts there. But as far as the, uh, uh, the starting rotation goes, I know that you have some, some ideas there. What do you, what are your ideas about who we might get as a starting pitcher? Well, the two names that have been thrown out there pretty often are Frankie Montas from the A's and then also Luis Castillo from mm -hmm. the Reds. With Montas, you, you can give up a lot of ready-to-go players because the A's need some ready-to-go players that are going to be in arbitration or maybe pre-arb because mm -hmm. they don't want to have to spend the money. And I think <laughs> they also gonna... need first base, by the way, FYI. Interesting. Like, yeah. it's, that's interesting. So maybe we actually put a McKinnon in that trade mm -hmm. and we can actually pull back. Because I was going to say like a Joe Adele would be a part of that trade because I think that they would want a top prospect there. But mm -hmm. maybe perhaps they would pivot and take a Trey Cabbage instead and maybe a couple of pitchers or a couple of ready to go bats for the major league team. And I think with the Reds as well, they need the same thing. Now Castillo makes me nervous because he was hurt for a bit and yeah. hasn't been as consistent as he, uh, we would like for him to be. And I wonder if like Stefanik would be in a trade for mm -hmm. somebody like a Castillo, especially if we get an Andujar or we get a Drury, like one of those guys maybe can play second base mm -hmm. and Drury can play second base. And we actually can fill those holes in our, our starting lineup this year. And I, I think if we're going to have to make those big moves for those pitchers, I think we're going to have to give up maybe one or two names that we wouldn't want to give up. This is kind of yeah. like what's, what's fun about the show is sometimes you can force a trade, right? <laughs> but then you realize like you're forcing the trade because in real life, they actually wouldn't make that trade, right? Yeah. And so I love the ideas when Angel fans throw out like, hey, what about this? What about that? 
But you have to keep in mind that it might sound great to us, but it may not sound great to them. And so mm-hmm. Frankie and and Luis Castillo are the two names that come to mind as starting pitchers that we could go and grab. Are, are there other names that you have, or do you have any details on what you would want to give up for those guys? I just think that uh, one of Andrew Wance or Austin Warren could also help you get a deal done because those guys yeah. are really solid relief pitchers. And I think that teams always need good relief arms. I wouldn't want to see them go. And I think I would prefer Austin Warren probably if we had to hold on to one of those two. Same, yes. But at the same time, uh, those are the kinds of ready now guys that you could make a deal with. And so I'm just thinking about some of the moves that the Angels can make to improve the team right now outside of of trades. I think that we need Joe Adele back up mm-hmm. with this team. Yep. Um, if he's not going to be the fourth outfielder, then is he on this team? Otherwise, you put him in a package and send him off because. Yeah. He's got to be the fourth outfielder or he's just going to sit in triple a and that's not helpful either. And so I think he, he definitely needs to be on this team over like a Juan Ligaris. I don't know why he's still there. Right. I also think that you bring up Michael Stefanik as soon as he's healthy and, and let's, let's end the Ren Hifo experiment and, yep. Yep. and get somebody who has uh, some solid numbers in triple a and has been consistent throughout his entire minor league career. I think that that is Stefanik. And as far as the pitching goes, I would want to hold off on making a pitching move right now because I still think that we have options in Jonathan Diaz and Jose Suarez and Kenny Rosenberg and those guys. And you even have Kai Bush and Coleman Crow and maybe even Davis Daniel that you can give a look to. I know Reed Detmers has gone back down to AAA to get some work in, uh, but I, I, I don't think we're out of pitching options yet, but I would like to see us make a move for Castillo or Montas because we're going to need that fifth solid arm in that rotation outside of Syndergaard and Otani and Sandoval and Lorenzen. So I really think that there are moves that you can make with other teams right now. And then there are moves you can make with this team that you already have in your system to improve it immediately. But like, can I just, can I just play a little fantasy baseball here and give you my lineup here? Brandon Marsh leading off Mike Trout second Shohei Otani third Taylor Ward in the cleanup spot, like you and I have been wanting. Yep. Jared Walsh at fifth. Then imagine Miguel Andujar or Brandon Drury batting sixth. Wow. And then you have Max Stassi. Uh, you have Andrew Velasquez or Tyler Wade at eighth. And then David Fletcher is going to be back probably at the end of July. And I think he makes an excellent number nine guy because if those guys in front of him get on base, Fletcher is always making contact right. and, and able to move those guys over and and start generating some some uh productive outs so i really like the way that the lineup would look with just one addition of Andujar or drury in that yeah. lineup it changes the whole trajectory and of course you still have you still have matt duffy to fill in you still have tyler wade to fill in or velasquez and uh, i really just think that we could make this team improve right now if we made some some quick easy moves in terms of calling people up and then Perry, I hope you're on the phone because we want to see some moves made. We don't want to sit on our hands. Yeah. We don't think you're that kind of GM. I'm talking to Perry right now because obviously they're listening a lot. <laughs> uh, but again, I go back to the Dodgers. They don't, they didn't waste any time in finding a way to improve the team. And right. I think that's exactly what these angels need to do right now. So offense now pitching later. Because yes, the offense really needs some help. I love that because it's hard to win when your shortstop's hitting 174 and right. your second baseman's hitting 205 and your third baseman doesn't knock in any runs, right? And so I agree with that. Offense now and then pitching later. I think offense right now, even before the all-star break, it's time to make some trades and time yeah. to bring up some guys. We need it right now. Absolutely. Well, Locked On Angels is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. As your small business grows, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people that you want to talk to and find them faster and for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of 810 million people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in quality, delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. And LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to a whole lot faster. Did you know that nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com backslash 
Locked on MLB. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked on MLB. Post your job for free and some terms and conditions do apply. All right. As you know, we do enjoy giving our winning keys or a, no, I, I say that wrong every week. We <laughs> enjoy giving our keys to a winning weekend. There you go. Our musical keys to a winning weekend. And uh, we have some for this series against the Mariners. Now we all know that we just faced them last Thursday through Sunday, uh, five, five games over four days. What a yeah. schedule that was. And the angels took four out of five in that series and probably could have taken all five. If Lorenzen had had better luck with the baseballs and they were rubbed up correctly. Yeah. Uh, according to the MLB note that went out this week, but Mike don't need a mutter. We need a mutter <laughs> and, and uh, we're for hire. Yes. <laughs> yep. Maybe they can put a mutter position on LinkedIn jobs. Uh, out there, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's talk about our, our musical keys to a winning weekend series against the Mariners as we play them the second weekend in a row. Okay, so my key for the weekend is coming from the song Mbop by Hanson. All right, <laughs> here's why I picked it because everything that makes sense for the Angels and for teams to be good just hasn't been working for the Angels. Like, why? Oh, interesting. Why? are we so good at the beginning of the year and then we've fallen apart? I know there's mm. stats and I know that there's approach things and everything that we've talked about, I'm sure that their coaches are talking about and the players are aware of. You heard Phil Nevin the other night say, those guys in that locker room, they're hurting, man. They're frustrated. Mm -hmm. Well, nothing seems to be working. And so I'm going to go with Mbop because we don't even know what that means. It seems <laughs> so silly and so strange. And here's why I'm going to go with that. It's time to go with maybe what doesn't make sense. Change mm. the routines, adjust how you're approaching when you're pitching or when you're batting. Let's pivot on those things. I, I want to see players like David McKinnon on this roster, as we mm. just talked about. I want to see those guys come up, and I want to see them in the, the starting lineup. It's it's tiresome to see Renjifo in there. Yeah. And as much as I'm a fan of Velasquez, dude needs to figure out how to hit if he's going to stay in this lineup. Right. 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 And so I want to see the right guys brought up and, and the guys that need some help sent back down and not just pitchers. I want to see those offensive guys sent down to get it right, to figure it out, or at least benched. And so somebody else is going to be in there. Tyler Wade should probably be starting over Renjifo more often because mm -hmm. he can get on base with a bunt or he's quick and he can steal some bags. Yeah. I just think it's time to do the things that you haven't done before. And nothing seems to be really working for this team. Nothing seems to spark them <laughs> because they win four or five and then they lose two or three to the Royals who are right. worse than the Mariners. And so right. I think that Hanson's Mbop is the perfect song and the perfect key for this weekend, because it's time to actually do something that doesn't quite make sense. That seems a little bit peculiar or a little bit odd. Cause I think that this team needs to just throw away the book, the Joe Madden book, and maybe even the <laughs> Phil Nevin book and try something new because I really think they got to get all three of these games this weekend. So that's my key to the weekend. Mbop by Hanson. What about you? I like it. Yeah. I mean, and it starts with change that lineup around, change that order around. I think that that is a, an immediate action that they can take. But as far as my keys to a winning weekend series go, uh, I decided to take do it again by Steely Dan. Oh, uh, good go song. Back, Jack, do it again. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to see us do it again this weekend in the same way that these halos took the series last weekend against the Mariners. And here's what I notice: Yes. The star of the show was Mike Trout, but you know what happened? We gave Shohei Otani a, a much needed day off, but I think it really took all the momentum out of his 10 game hit streak that he had going on yeah. by giving him that day off. And I think that kind of messed him up for the weekend. So hopefully he's riding the momentum from the last two days into that series uh, this weekend. And I think that Shohei can do that. But as far as doing it again, I want to see the guys like Tyler Wade, Velasquez, even, even Renjifo and Taylor Ward was on base a lot. They contributed because they were on base when Mike Trout was hitting home runs. And then you even had guys like Kurt Suzuki get a two run double and contribute to the score. Jared Walsh came in in a pinch hit situation and, and hit a two run shot. And so there were particular guys on base when the heavy hitters were coming up. And that's why Mike Trout was able to get so many RBIs this weekend because the other guys were doing their job. And, and that's what I need to clarify is 
you don't have to be the guy getting the RBIs. You just need to be on base for the RBI getters like Mike Trout, Agreed. like Taylor yeah. Ward, like Jared Walsh. And so I really hope that if they're not the ones who are driving in people, they're the ones getting on the bases. And so I want to see more of that this weekend. And we saw a little bit of it last weekend. There were some games there was seemed like, Oh, Trout's all the offense that there is. But again, that's not a bad thing when you have guys on base. And that means that those guys on base have been doing their job correctly yeah. and, and getting in a position to where they can be the runs that the heavy hitters drive in. So that's why I'm going with do it again by Steely Dan. Let's go out there and take this series just like we did last week. Well, thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. Johnny, can you tell them how they can find us on social medias? Yeah, you're going to want to get us on Twitter at Locked On Angels, and you also want to get at us at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. The reason why, Mike, is because we have ourselves a Monday mailbag coming up. Is that right? That's right. It's one of our favorite days. And we shared about all the trades the Angels are going to make and should make. And Perry's listening, and we appreciate that. <laughs> Hi, but Perry. since he's since he's listening, maybe you need to share some of your ideas yeah. as well. Some of the comments on YouTube have been great, and some of your tweets have been great. So send us those all throughout the weekend. Don't just talk about the weekend, although you can, but we want to hear your thoughts on what the Angels need to do to make some trades because you got some great ideas out there. So Send us those via Twitter, via Instagram, or you can call us 714-409-6396. Give us all your thoughts, all your opinions, and we'll talk about all of it on Monday on Locked on Angels. Love that. Well, I hope that you all have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you back here on Monday. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. And we'll see you right back here next week on Locked on Angels.